Give me two seconds. There we go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me today, you can check her out going against T. Bella Madison, LFC Booty Camp 3D, Miss Bella Rockefeller. Hey. Bella, congratulations and hello. Hi, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Ah, uh, you're very welcome. First and foremost, you went through a lot of great competition from Robin Takazawa, Janie Kiss, Jocelyn Navarro. I'm talking about Angela Marie, and here you are. You won. I can't believe it. I'm so I'm still in shock about it. Like, I have 750 fans on Instagram. That's nothing, you know, compared to these women who have like 30,000, 75,000. I'm like a small fish here. I'm I'm in shock that I won. I couldn't be more happy about it. I am so thankful to everyone who voted for me, and I can't wait to to see you guys on the in the ring. It's I, I'm yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> I look at it from a stance, too. Now, LFC Madness was such a huge success. Now, the two that you went through, such as Jocelyn Navarro, amazing talent on the independent scene for professional wrestling. Same with Angela Marie and Robin Takazawa, like I mentioned, and also, excuse me, Janie Kiss. You have the modeler and wrestler perspective on all different sides and people from so many different outlooks and endeavors and facets of life. For you, I think what's very great about you is we've seen your social media follow. You're very engaging. So I got to say, a lot of people gravitated towards you, Bella. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, what can I say? Uh, this is all new to me, um, and I'm just so happy I can be a part of it. So, you know, thanks again to everybody who voted for me. <laughs> now, what I'd love to ask you is what I love about everybody that gets involved with LFC, that is lingerie fighting championships. We have the prospects. We have the madness, these tournaments to, you know, get new people involved with LFC. What really gravitated you towards the LFC front? Because like I said, perfect fit. You like a hand in glove. What really gravitated you towards LFC, Bella? You know what happened was I uh, I did a mud wrestling match with Bella Inc. And um, that's with the Glam, Res G Glam Wrestling. We're on episode nine. And she said to me, she's like, you know, Bella, you would be an amazing fit for the LFC. And I at first I was like, what's LFC? I don't know anything about it, you know. And as soon as I started researching it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is definitely something for me, something I would love to be a part of. And since, you know, she recommended me to to try out, I, I said, why not? Might as well. Go ahead. And that's the thing about life. It's all about taking chances. And first and foremost, another great Bella and Bella Inc., probably one of the toughest fighters. I mean, if you saw last year with Sturgis, this woman gave birth and weeks later she's competing at Sturgis. How she amazing incredible she is so incredible i mean her body is incredible like her personality is wonderful so i'm excited to get to get to work with her in the future i hope that we can have another bella versus bella match you know I, since there's so many bellas you know it's like all right you know we might as well have like a triple team bella or something like that i don't know <laughs> Hey, what we need to do is do like a triple threat match. Bella Inc., T. Bella, and Bella, and Bella exactly. Rockefeller right there. Yeah, it would now, be crazy. What's great is the final. It's LFC Booty Camp 3D. I got to say, first and foremost, it's beauty in three dimensions, that being the 3D. And who doesn't love some great 3D action? T. Bella Madison is a well, another one. Going through Dominic David Fabiano. We're talking about Angel Angelica Co., who is amazing from the modeling standpoint in Italy. She makes it against you. And what a great talent is T. Bella Madison. Another beauty. People really gravitated towards her as well. Well, exactly. She's so uh, interactive on social media. Like, I constantly see her posting, and she really knows what she's doing as far as that goes. I have only been in this for about a year. Uh, I took a hiatus for about five years from modeling, from everything, and um, I'm starting all over again from scratch. So it's been a little less than a year. That's why my membership count is so low my my fan count is so low because i'm literally starting all over again and i am actually in a way better position than i was when i left i used to really just do like a pinup modeling like vintage cars hot rods motorcycles um vintage clothing style stuff and i've kind of grown out of that now and i'm expanding my horizons so uh you know here i am <laughs> I look at it from a stance too. like you talk about a year when it comes to sports, there's a lot of people that go on the rise even after a year. You know what I'm saying? So I think for you, 
It's just the grind of getting back to where you need to be. I think that's very admirable. That's very courageous of you because, again, everybody has that positive assurance, positivity about them. And you always are staying in your lane. And I got to respect that about you. Well, thanks. You know, I it, it's also motivating to me because um, I've been taking MMA classes. I've been taking kickboxing. I've been taking jujitsu. And knowing now that I actually am going to be fighting against people, um, I'm training even harder and I'm going to be strong and I'm just going to really, you know, nail this. And I know, you know, T Bella, she really talks a good talk, you know, and I know she's, she seems pretty fit and everything. I don't know what kind of fighting training she has. And, you know, um, it's one thing to talk the talk. It's another thing to walk the walk. And I don't do as much talking and as much as, you know, Hey, you know, I'm so much type things. I, I'm uh, I'm I'm more like the proof is in the pudding and like you'll see when we fight you'll definitely be able to see who has more training from that I guess you see it, it's one of those things where they say it's always the quiet ones and number two say less less is you're more right so right uh, you're so very right you know I just like to sit back I watch if, if somebody's gonna come at me of course I'll you know respond but you know um you know we'll see <laughs> no, I, I could appreciate that because what a lot of people don't realize is because a lot of people, you know, it's amazing how people's perceptions of you are when you're like quiet and it's just like, oh, you know, they may have a tune about it. It's like, no, I'm very observant. But when the time is right to strike, boom, oh, here you yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was kind of thinking like what, uh, you know, how everybody, you know, T. Bella is the, the rebel princess. I'm like, all right, I'm Bella Rockefeller, right? Because who doesn't want to be pretty and rich? Right. I got that. But like, I need a little fighting name in there. I was thinking like, should I be the mantis? Like you can, you think I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna huh, get it on, but really I'm gonna bite your head off. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out like what my, you know, fight name should be. <laughs> well, we, well, we've never had a mantis, so that would be the first for LFC. We never had a mantis, so that that yeah. kind of fits. I like that. <laughs> I also look at it from a stance, too, with you. First and foremost, the Rockefeller name, dare I say, uh, Rockefeller, to quote Jay-Z, H to the Izzo, hello. So there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff in your name that really sells and is very marketable. So I, I love the Rockefeller because, again, pretty and rich, champagne wishes, caviar dreams, to quote Robin Leach, yes? Right? Come on, bring it on. You know, I got the pretty part going on. I just, you know, bring me that money, baby. <laughs> Of course, and I will say this, Bella, as I see you right here and right now, you got the ink about you too, like the very ink magazine type of pinup model, like you were saying. The tattoos is always very gravitating because it's art and the body is a campus, you know? Thanks. Yeah, I was actually a tattoo artist for about 13 years, so that is why I have so many, and um, I still love the art. It's just, it's been a long time since I've been tattooed and since I have actually tattooed anyone, so, but yeah, I love them, absolutely, and I still want more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, as someone who, I'll be honest with you, two of my pieces that are on my arms are of uh, dedication to my grandfather and a lot of stuff that really is meaningful. So I got to say, like you mentioned, it's very addicting. I mean, if we've seen shows like Ink Master and T Tattoo Nightmares, which has the comical but yet serious side about it, I mean, you can't sure. really go wrong, right? You know, that's the thing is like, I was a tattoo artist for, like I said, about 13 years working in the industry and uh, I moved out to California and I found this... Um, Craigslist ad when Craigslist was about getting jobs and not the creepiness that it is now. <laughs> and I ended up becoming a television producer for a tattoo competition show. So like you mentioned, Ink Masters, I was actually a consulting producer for the female version of that show, Best Ink, which um, didn't get really picked up. Ink Masters took off. They really, really, really like stole the stage. But, um, you know, I, I ended up being a producer for television after that. That's why I haven't tattooed for so long. <laughs> I got to say, first and foremost, from the Endeavor side of things, tattoo artist, producing television, model, LFC fighter. That's that's a Jack slash Jill of all trades. You're kind of like a renaissance woman. My goodness. I am. Um, that's a thing. You know, I got to stay busy and you can't just focus on one thing. I mean, I can when I'm focused, but it's good to have enough things under my belt or your belt or anyone's belt to to go anywhere do anything and be unstoppable so yeah <laughs>
I always looked at it from a stance too. Like what's interesting about people in general is from the preferences. Like you said, you have to be multifaceted. And that's what I love because a lot of people, when it comes to like professional wrestling fans, right? There's a lot of wrestlers that'll dabble into music and acting and stuff. And there's some people like, why, well, why don't you just stick to wrestling? It's like, no, I can explore different avenues and it leads to great, great. Look at John Cena, look at the rock. They're Mm -hmm. polarizing in the field right now. Yeah. I actually, um, I actually got offered to, uh, play a vampire in a uh, Netflix miniseries. Um, so, I mean, that's all because of the LFC, to be honest with you. I was approached by a producer, and uh, hopefully it'll go through. Hopefully I'll get my little my little spot in the sunshine going, instead of being behind the camera, being in front of it, um, which I absolutely adore as well. <laughs> so. Well, first and foremost, what a great role to play being the vampire, as we've seen with so many movies like Interview with the Vampire, the Underworld series. We'll be here all day. So it's, I think I look forward to seeing you as the vampire role. Hopefully oh, you get <laughs> It's going to be great. <laughs> I also can add a little Lost Boys reference there because you can't go wrong with some Lost Boys. Cry little sister, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, no. I mean, what can I say? I, I, I don't really have the teeth for it yet, but I guess they'll grow in time. Hey, <laughs> I'm sure they will as well. But like I said, I really hope you do get that part. Thank you. You're very welcome. Now, from the LFC side of things, we have a lot of different art forms from jujitsu to wrestling to MMA, what have you. Now, I know you said that you've been taking MMA classes. T Bella has been doing her thing in Florida with Pro Wrestling 2.0, a great wrestling school out there. Mm-hmm. For you, the MMA side of things, man, what well, we've seen from women from Ronda Rousey to Paige Van Zandt to so many people in the MMA world, it's amazing to see the women taking over and just killing it in all sports and combative natures. I just, I love MMA. You know, it's a combination of of jujitsu, of kickboxing, of boxing. And it, it it's just so fun to like take people down, use your elbows, you know, use your knees, like really get in there as opposed to just regular boxing. You know, boxing to me is just so rigid and I like the fluidity of the MMA. Um, it, it's really taken my heart. <laughs> so. Look at it from a stance, too, and I love your words of fluidity because that's what it is. I mean, when it comes to MMA and the overall art form, I will say, like you so eloquently put it there, you're like ludicrous. You drop bows on them with that Southern hospitality. You throw it in bows. So (laughs) (laughs) That's the overall art form, and that's what I love about it. It's like chess, you know what I'm saying? Where where are you going to place your next move, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's really fun to throw people around. What can I say? (laughs) Hey, I look at it from a stance, too. When we look from movie standpoint, I will say this. A lot of women have been in abusive relationships. A lot of them want to be like that Jennifer Lopez in Enough when she's just kicking ass and taking names. So we've seen it in popular culture as well. Well, you know, that's that's kind of what, like, almost what spurred me onto this whole track is um, I was in an abusive relationship. And, um, you know, not knowing how to defend myself is one reason why I decided to start taking martial arts because I never wanted to be in that position again. So um, I hope that other women will also like follow my lead and start, you know, leaving their abusive relationships and getting themselves some defense lessons because it's important for every, everyone, I believe, every woman, especially, because you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes, you know, it's a, it's all sunshine and rainbows. And then you turn the corner and it's a volcano. You know, yep. so yeah, I mean, it, that's that was my initial push into into fighting, and um, I'm really happy that I'm I'm learning and, and I am where I am now. First and foremost, again, you're coming back strong and doing your thing, and again, much respect to you on that front. But my goodness gracious, I think that's an inspiration for a lot of women, and same with just abusive relationships and just sports in general. Women have always been, again, the sex appeal is great, and it's great to have that beautiful imagery from the overall standpoint internally and externally, but it's like, let's not you know, demote the fact that we have a lot of talented women here. And like I said, getting them the chance to shine. But it's like, God dang, man, we got a lot of talented women. Just don't focus on the sex appeal. Let's go over here and actually let them showcase their talents, right? Right. That's it. You know, I am pretty sexy, but, you know, I'm an extremely talented woman. And there's so much more behind this than just this, you know. And um, I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to show it. And I'm, you know, out in the open about everything that happened. and. Um, I'm I'm strong. I'm getting stronger every day, and I hope that other women who have been in my situation are also taking the, the getting the help they need, and also like getting stronger, because it's not okay. Yeah. 
I mean, I look at it from an empowering standpoint. I think from a stance too, like again, as a as a man who was raised by two great women and my mother and my grandmother would never go into that path that a lot of men unfortunately see themselves with, with abusive relationships towards women. And I look at it from a stance too, very cowardice and just not cool on all fronts. So I see women like yourself and it makes me smile. So again, got to give you love and respect on that front from getting yourself Thank out of a you. bad situation, getting yourself into a great situation where you're here now and you're very welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was hard, but here I am, you know, the other side of the, uh, that other side of the volcano, you know, everything is fucking beautiful. Oops, can I say that? <laughs> yes, you're, 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 right. <laughs> you're okay. Everything's really good right now, and I couldn't be in a better place in my life, so. Well, yeah. that's what you have to do it. I mean, a lot of people have gone through a lot of trials and tribulations, and a lot of people don't realize, like, the positivity, because the journey is worth it. You know what I'm saying? The journey is really, really worth it. And like I said, you're living proof of that. And I look at it from a stance too. Here you are. It's LFC. You're going into 3D, the booty camp 3D with mm -hmm. T. Bella Madison. And LFC on, on its own right is really soaring. We got the three nights of Sturgis, which I'm sure you're very excited to see a lot of beautiful women on motorcycles coming yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't wait to see these fights. I mean, the, the, the girls that are going to be fighting are so strong, so beautiful, so empowered. And, um, Gosh, I just can't wait to see who wins because then I know who I'll be going up against. <laughs> Look at from a stance too as well what i've always loved the comparison here and this is also tying to lfc so lauren the animal fogel who's been an integral part of lfc beautiful she i know is so hardcore i follow her i'm a fan her legs are like so solid and amazing um and she's her character her personality that you see from her instagram posts so funny so goofy, definitely like the type of person I would like to be friends with. Hopefully we can be friends, Lauren. Hi, hearts, I'm Bella. <laughs> well, when we have teams now from the blue team, the pink team to the black team, it's gonna be great to see you two together or one-on-one -on -one against each other. I mean, you have Lauren the Animal Fogel, who's an LFL All-Star coming from the Lingerie Football League world. I mean, Ty Emery from Australia doing her thing coming into LFC as well. So, I mean, the LFL and LFC tie-ins are great because, again, LFL was the, I'm going to play some football and I'm also going to kick ass and look sexy at the same exactly. time. Exactly. So I love that, too. I mean, these are all just, like, amazingly beautiful women empowered in their lingerie. You know, yeah, we're freaking sexy, but you know what? We're also strong, so don't fuck with us. You know, it's, 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 it's amazing. I look at it from a stance too like you were talking about the mud wrestling side of things and here's what's cool about that too because I mean a lot of people kind of like you know people say what they say and everybody has an opinion everybody has an opinion opinions are like assholes everybody has them we'll say yeah. that here. but the thing that's cool about it too is like in wrestling we've seen women's erotic wrestling I mean for me that's just like people will be like meh but I'm like if you actually broaden your horizons and think about it sex appeal goes a long way with any venture and as the old term goes sex sells i mean it's just a little it's a little twist we're flipping the script if you will on the sport it does i mean you know at like regular wrestling cells but those girls are also super sexy i mean their outfits are a little tight little with all the attitude i mean we're just taking it a little notch up a little less clothing the same amount of intensity the same amount of uh, strength behind us just a little less clothing <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, I look at it from a stance, too. Like, that's really what makes it makes it gold. You know what I'm saying? From the lingerie standpoint and in general. Now, I will say this about you from the modeling side of things, Miss Pinup Model. I got to say, I've seen a lot of your image. Beautiful imagery, as always, Miss Bella. Thank you. So I, you're very welcome. So I look at it from a stance, too, like the modeling aspect. Modeling is amazing because, again, as a kid, I grew up with the Tyra Banks's, the Naomi Campbell's, the In the Closet video, Michael Jackson, Tyra Banks, America's Next Top Model, on all that with Kel Mitchell and Good Burger. I look at it from a stance, too, from that side, the plus-size modeling with Ashley Graham. The modeling world is absolutely amazing to see beautiful women of all shapes and sizes. Yeah, I'm loving it now because, um, all right, so when I was about 13, I did a, a modeling school. And it was modeling, etiquette, whatever. Um, and then they called my mother when I was about 16. And they said to her, has she grown? And I'm, I'm about 5'5". Five five, so, no, I hadn't grown. But back then, like you say, 5'9 was the standard. So, nowadays, that you can be shorter. You can be 5 foot. You can be in a wheelchair. You can just, and anybody, any shape, as long as you have the confidence behind you, can be a model nowadays. And I am absolutely loving it because being 5'5", five five, <laughs> I can, I, 
I can get, I've been getting jobs. Um, so, you know, it's really opened and being tattooed as well, because, you know, like that used to be a big stigma as well. Like no tattoos, you got to be five, nine, you got to be a hundred and 10 pounds and five, nine, you know, all of these, all of these stigmas have just gone out the window and any body shape size is, can be represented in the modeling world. And it's wonderful because that's reality. That's reality. That's, those are people. This is the majority of people are not five, nine and 110 pounds. No offense to those who are, you're beautiful. Everybody's beautiful, you know, but it's, great that like the underdog is getting a, a chance now see we talk about standards here and, and you're right that's how it used to be it used to be very taboo like oh my god tattoos it's like if you look at the room of stance at, to put it bluntly it's like who the fuck cares you know what i'm saying so as we get grow into like the evolution of what we've seen in modeling in general like look at the bodybuilding world if you are a woman and you have like muscles and you work out and you're fit people will be like oh that's mannish which is a term that i hate and I'm just like, it's just a beautiful woman with muscles. Who cares? Yeah. That's how you have to view it. You know what I'm saying? But then there's some ignorant people out there, and that's a whole nother can of worms. But it's just like, we're in a world where it's accepting now. Just everybody do what they do and love what you do and just be united, not divided, you know? Right, absolutely. And like fitness modeling, it's, it's something I'd also like to get into eventually. I'm working on my muscles. I mean, I'm taking like two hours of martial arts training a day and then an hour at the gym. So I should be there in no time. But um, fitness modeling is also something I'd really like to get into. My brother is actually a, not a fitness model, but he just won his first bodybuilding championship. And he owns a CrossFit gym here in Nebraska. And, uh, you know, it kind of, it runs in the family. We've got really good genes for bodybuilding. Thanks to my mom. So, <laughs> um, so I hope to be up there as well as competing in some bodybuilding champ in, uh, contests soon. I hope so. And first and foremost, congratulations to your brother. I've always respected the art form and the discipline that goes into bodybuilding that a lot of people really don't get a chance to see. And that's also something that really encompasses lingerie fighting championship, the fitness side of things, because these girls are always doing their thing from classes, from just, you know, working out in the gym, from MMA classes, wrestling classes. The grind never stops. No, it really doesn't. Um, I'm literally uh, five days a week training, you know, sometimes six if I can, you know, it's, it's just, it's intense and, but it's worth it. It's so worth it. I feel good. I'm healthy. Um, I have so much energy and, you know, it, it's just, it's really, it's experiencing a healthy and full life and in, in its best possible way. So, yeah. <laughs> And then you go, like you mentioned, just going back to the height thing for a second, from 5'5", five, five and the, the standard being 5'9", we have so many, I'm going to put it as the goddess standpoint, the Amazon goddess, the giant goddesses, from six foot going forward, the height requirement is just like, because there's a lot of beautiful six foot women killing it in the game right now. Oh, I know, I know. I actually have a very good friend here who is in that category, and I, she's like, I really want to model, and I said, there's a niche for you, babe. This Amazon woman, you are it. You really should be exploring that because, I mean, it's amazing. Also, like the lift and carry, the like, um, I mean, I can do that. I can do that with a man who's around 150 to 170 pounds. But like anything over that, it's just I'm so short, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's the thing that's also amazing, too, when it comes to fetish modeling and just in general. Like you mentioned, the lift and carry. It's amazing to see one's mind and the uniqueness and the preferences that men have. And I got to say, the lift and carry is a big deal because who does not want to be lifted by a beautiful woman with such strength and class and elegance, man? It's something that's really, like you said, niche. But yeah. there's a lot of people that are into it. Absolutely. I'm finding more and more niche fetishes the, the, the further I'm in this industry. Uh I just, well, actually tomorrow I'm going to be heading down to Arkansas to work with um, Fred588. He does quicksand fetishes. So um, it's like, you know, uh, help me, help me. I'm drowning in quicksand. Uh, oh, no, I'm, oh, no, I'm dead. Um, <laughs> but, it, there, you know, there's a niche for everything out there. Um, and this is, this, is, this is a really fun one, actually. I, I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> 
I, I look at it from a stance too. Like a lot of people, like again, have their criticism. Oh, that's a little weird. But I'm like, have you actually explored your horizons to see what you're into? Like, there's foot fetishes. There's this than that. There's the dominatrix style things. I mean, sometimes it's like you can never know what you're into. You know, I'll that's be honest with you. To, to it, exactly to equate it. Don't mean to cut you off, but to equate it to something, it's like with sex. Like you never know what you like to do sex. To put it like that, it's the truth. Until you've done it, you just don't know. You know, you don't know what's out there either until it comes across your path. Like, maybe you have a quicksand fetish and you just don't know it because you've never seen it before, you know? I had no idea I would enjoy swimming in mud, but I love it. <laughs> hey, again, from the stance with mud wrestling and just in general, that is such a popular field, whether it be like cat fighting or just in general. Like, again, like you've seen that. And I'll be honest, as a kid in high school, I remember my senior year, the girl, it was always like girls coming out of the bathroom. Here's a cat fight. Like you can't miss it from a high school standpoint of just fighting, but then you actually take it into a profession and girls from their past experience, boom, here you go. You never know how aggressive you could be and what you like it to use it from an art form standpoint, right? Absolutely. You know, I, I, I was in a lot of fights in high school mm -hmm. and I never realized that I would be doing this professionally. I enjoyed it then. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, mean, I did. But um, I like it now even more because I'm training for it. And, um, you know, there's just this whole culture behind it. And I'm so excited to be part of the LFC. I am so happy that I got voted in. And especially because I have only like 750 fans. Like, all right, I'm in. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> And first and foremost, I'm just going to add with your fights in high school. It's okay. You could say you like to scrap. I see you like to scrap. Get your get your hands dirty. Maybe scratch with the claws with the nails. I see you, Bella. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, normally they fall off. So <laughs> better just have a good uh, nail artist. <laughs> so I have to ask you now because I got to say with the with lingerie fighting championship not just the fight there's the grandiose entrances and then there's the attire so I got to say what do you think about lingerie what do you think about wearing there Bella oh my gosh I so I'm a um a string bikini model like I am I love being naked so you know like having to wear a little something else is not bad you know what i mean i'm i really love lingerie as well um i'm like i work for this company called sling it bikinis and they just make the little teeniest tiniest little string bikinis that's literally a string going from here all the way back you know um and i have no problem being semi-nude it, and and fighting like that I think it's wonderful I think it's freeing actually so um I'm kind of working on like what you know I I made a a song to walk out to as well so you know I'm a, I'm a singer and uh music producer so I made my own walkout song and I'm kind of like feeling a little bit of like the million dollar man like I'd like to get some money and like shove it down some girls throats and stuff you know come out with like the dollar gun like have it just rain dollar bills on me or something maybe I'm getting ahead of myself but you know this is what keeps me up at night <laughs> hey, if everybody can have a price for the million dollar man everybody can have a price for some Bella Rockefeller so there Absolutely. you go you know <laughs> I'm just saying, you're like, you're the female million dollar man. Would Ted DiBiase would shove that money in your in your mouth? Like, come on, who doesn't love it? You know it? what? He's from Omaha. I'm from Omaha. I just feel like, yes, this needs to happen, you know? <laughs> I got to ask, are you going to steal his trademark laugh? That ha 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 everybody's got a price. Uh, not quite, but I will come up with something just as good. <laughs> and, you know, but it'll just be like the Bella Rockefeller laugh, you know? <laughs> There you go. Yeah. But no, that, that's a great influence, too, because if you think of the top heels in professional wrestling, everybody so underrated is the Million Dollar Man, including his son, Ted DiBiase Jr. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. But like characters that you will never forget. So memorable and so important to wrestling history. You know, um, 
it's just amazing. It's, it's yeah, great. <laughs> Absolutely. And I look at it from a stance too. What's cool about LFC and getting involved and in going through different avenues like the LFC madness, it's kind of like what wrestling and I'll to pertain it to girls nowadays. Like if you're not a fan of professional wrestling, like you see the Bella twins, right? And you have no idea who they are. You could just watch total Bellas. You can watch total divas and they go, Oh, this is what I'm interested in. So reality television, and there's a lot of different ways to get into avenues and to set sport and to learn from it, you know? It's really funny you mentioned that show because that was actually a show I worked on. Um, I was I worked on Total Divas, and that was my first behind the scenes wrestling experience, which really got me like, oh my god, I want to do this. I really want to do this, you know. So um, that was I don't know, maybe six years ago that I worked on that show. But I like I love the Bella Twins. I love the WWE, and I, I loved everything about it. And I am so excited to be in the LFC and, and actually doing it. So, you know, dreams, they do come true. You just have to work hard for them, but you know, you can make your, your dreams a reality just like that before you know it, there they are. Agreed wholeheartedly. And by the way, first and foremost, now you're putting that remembrance in back of my head because I cannot believe, because now I'm thinking about it, like, yeah, Total Divas was like 2013, 2014, which introduced, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> And now we have Eva Marie, who was a product of that now back in the WWE. Beautiful woman. Gets a lot of crap for her wrestling ability, but was such a beautiful woman. Gorgeous. Gorgeous women. All of them. All of them are so beautiful. Yeah. And it's amazing that they can keep their face and just be so hardcore. <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. And I look at it from a stance with you. I just have to go back to the string bikini for a second. So the image I have in my head, you're like those girls on MTV Spring Break who used to come out in Cancun while like Eminem and NSYNC were performing. Those girls just walking around, hyping up the crowd. That's the image I have of the string Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need my own hype girls, though, I think. I'm going to have to get some like girls in string bikinis hyping me up, you know? <laughs> And I look at it from the music artist standpoint, first and foremost, doing your own songs and being created from the music standpoint is awesome. So I have to ask you from your playlist side of things. Me, myself, I'm very eclectic. I love all music. It's an art form. What's currently on your playlist, Ms. Bella Rockefeller? Ooh, okay. So I've been listening to a lot of uh, Shy Girl, Cobra, um, uh, Arca, 2000. These are all like semi-industrial, hardcore punk uh, EDM it's such a it, they're all fusions of like everything that I love like I, I am also very eclectic with my playlist I am trained classically trained in opera um, and jazz so like obviously I love those types of music as well but like the the music that's coming out nowadays how it's just so crazy and eclectic industrial punk um, like it's a, it's a conglomeration of everything all at once. And, um, yeah, that's, what's on my playlist right now. It's some really weird stuff, but it's really fun. <laughs> I get it because it's funny. Cause I remember my mom, I had my playlist going. Cause like one song could be like the boogie woogie bugle boy from the Andrew sisters from like the forties. Right. Yeah. And then it'll just go to like Tony, Tony, Tony from the nineties. And she's like, well, that's a weird mix. I'm like, but hey, it's the evolution of music. You go from the 40s to the 90s to the 2000s. Yeah. To the 2010s. You it, Sorry, you can't just love one genre. I mean, you can, but I can't. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Like, my buddy is, like, really big into, like, the new waves in the 80s. And, again, great music. But it's like, dude, I can't just listen to new wave 24-7. You got to move a little more. You know what I'm saying, yeah, brother? Right? right? New wave shoe guys, like, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know? Like, <laughs> you got to mix it up for sure. I mean, you're talking about, like, industrial rock and opera and, like, hard rock. Like, you could be into screamo. And, like, you said jazz. And it could be, like, bank boogie set up, jump the boogie. And you're snapping your fingers, you're tapping toes. Like, who can't go wrong with that, right? And, I mean, you could even do, like, a screamo version of that song if you wanted to. You can mix it all together. And that's the beauty today of the music today. It's, like, um, what's, it, what's that guy's name? He does, like, he does covers. He's in, 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 in Dick something. Richard G. I know you're talking. Yeah, there you go. That's who you're talking about. Yep, exactly. And, yeah. and the, you have people like Violet Orlandi who's killing it and doing her own covers. She's a beautiful girl doing amazing work. And that's the thing. You can mix a lot of stuff into it. I mean, back in the day, we had Punk Goes Pop where you had like a day to remember mm -hmm. singing Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson. So, I mean, it happens. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is really funny too when that happens too because like you see all these crazy hardcore guys in, in like with mohawks and stuff and then all of a sudden they're like singing Britney Spears oops I did it again or, you know <laughs> uh, well it's like when Bowling for Soup started singing Hit Me Baby One More Time and Freaky yeah. Friday <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> exactly exactly yeah it's so fun <laughs> I mean, one other example I can put to that, it's like corn, right? Like freak on a leash corn, like falling away from me corn. Here they are singing Word Up by Cameo, right? Like, come on. <laughs> well, even like when when Johnny Cash, or when, um, Nine, when he did Hurt, you mm -hmm. know, like Johnny Cash is country, Nine Inch Nails is industrial rock. Like, but he did such a beautiful cover of that song. So, mm -hmm. you know, let's mix it up a little bit more and get funky, you know? <laughs> Hey, if Marilyn Manson can sing Tainted Love by Soft Cell as well. <laughs> <laughs> also, amazing cover. Also, an amazing cover. Yeah. <laughs> no, he did a lot of those, man. He did Judas Priest, Personal Jesus, Reach Out and Touch Faith. Yep. There you go. And like, it's, it's crazy too because that was a hit. You know, not only was it a hit when it came out, but he made it a hit again. So, you know, you got a good song when it can be covered multiple times and still be one of like, I'm sure it made it to top 10 or at least top 100 at some point, you know? It's like nowadays, like G Easy and and Chris Brown and Mark Morrison. You heard that return of the Mac in the beginning of the song. Like that song is going to be sampled for the test of time, you know? Forever, 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 forever. Yeah, classic. And what's interesting about like that is like when Chucky Booker came out with Games, that song back in the day. That's actually what Mark Morrison originally sampled a little bit from. If you remember the song Games by Chucky Booker. Uh, I can't say. I I mean, I'm sure if I heard it, I would especially the the riff you're talking about because it has been sampled so many times um but off, off the top of my head it's not ringing a bell okay i'll send it to you after this show because it has okay. that like like return of the mac does you'll hear oh, yeah okay i mean yeah <laughs> a return of the mac obviously is well known you know and then that's what's funny too is like a lot of these covers a lot of younger people don't even know the original song you know so then it, to them it's all new and like those old folks <laughs> no offense <laughs> hey none taken i look at it from a stance too you also have to look at it from the perspective it's like what's old is new again because this new generation is learning about what we grew up with. yeah exactly which is, you know it's really crazy to think about like the 90s being called vintage i mean you know <laughs> And I make that because it's just like the 90s was like not too long ago for us. Like, I mean, for instance, like I was looking at stuff like from the pop genre, like when NSYNC put out No Strings Attached, like that album's already 21 years old. And it's like, where did the time go? It's like, bye, bye, bye was just yesterday, right? Yeah, no, exactly. That's what we said to 1999, just not that long ago, right? Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> But hey, I mean, it, I mean, it gets look at the like influx of TikTok, right? Like you see like TikTok dances, like you'll see some of the stuff that's included there. I mean, TikTok has kind of revived a lot of stuff social media wise, too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm not a really big TikToker. I am. Um, I'm still working on my whole social media angle. I'm probably one of the worst at it. Uh, and if anybody can help me with that, I'm taking applications. Uh, <laughs> so, and I would like to really get into the TikTok stuff. It looks like it's fun. Have do you do many TikTok videos? I've done a couple that are like really inspirational stuff, like positivity, or I'll put a lot of these shows on there. I mean, you could use it for create a lot of avenues. I know a lot of people do the dance stuff. I mean, you put on some blueberry fago yeah. here. We, yep. That. I don't even know how to get something. <laughs> it's stuff like that. Like, you, you know, but it's, 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 look at it from when Vine used to be a thing. It's like Vine, but turned up to put yes, it to the best exactly. description. Exactly. You know, maybe once, uh, once I come out, my song will get on there too. It's, it's a really, it's a great song. It's about money. Go figure. Rockefeller. You know, we want that dough. <laughs> so, we'll see if we can get a dance, go into it, put it on TikTok. <laughs> <Something>. <laughs> Hey, to quote the notorious B and Jay Z, you love the dope. Take it back to life after death. That is absolutely. <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah. Yep. Makes hey, the world go around. Yep. You could also be like Tupac, ask him, how do you want it? All eyes on you. Bella Rockefeller, hello. How do you want it? Uh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Jason, on the track. Yep. <laughs>
So, Bella, before we close this out, please promote the social medias. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on today. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much, fans of the LFC. It's great to be here. All right. Now, for Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, please promote the socials. Twitter, Instagram, oh. everybody can follow you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Instagram, it's Bella, B-E-L-L-A underscore Rockafella, R-O-C-K-A-F-E-L-L-A underscore, right? That's Instagram. And on Twitter, it's Bella Rockafella with instead of the A, it's a four. Yep. Yeah. It's a little it's, uh, working it's, on it. <laughs> sure. Well, I will put the links to the description on the SoundCloud and from the audio platforms and same with my YouTube. So everybody, please go give Bella Rockefeller a uh, a follow on both the Instagram and Twitter fronts. You're also doing the thing on OnlyFans, man. I've seen your OnlyFans as well. Killing it on the OnlyFans. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a side hustle every day. It's a side hustle. So also you can join me on my OnlyFans backslash Bella Rockefeller. You get to see uh, little uncensored videos and photos and stuff. So it's fun. <laughs> I will say this from the curvaceous and voluptuosity factor you showcase all that with your photos and your overall being it and Bella before we close this out I will say this guys check this out on laundryfc.com wherever you get your audio and video platforms for LFC and much like the name of this podcast on my overall mindset beauty strength and dominance the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are and Miss <laughs> Bella Rockefeller I include you in those sentiments thank you so much for your time thank you so much have a good night bye bye